speaking of Airbus, um, they have some potential bomb sniffing robots and potential biohazard yeah. sniffing robots. So yeah. what do you, what do you got on that? Well, it looks like Airbus has been working on another company uh, to detect, obviously, in an airplane or in an airport, you want to be able to detect that there's somebody with uh, munitions or explosives. And the way we have done it for forever is with uh, dogs. And you train dogs or animals that have really good noses to go sniff this stuff out. So you make it like a game and the dog senses this out and and barks or whatever the animal's going to do. But in the electronic world, we haven't really been in reach the stage of um, something that can just smell the air and say, yeah, yeah. Hey, that, guy, that guy's got some weapon on him, right? Well, it sounds like they can actually adapt that same technology to detecting viruses. And I know there's been talk, I think, and I have to go back and look, because I thought that at one point they had trained some animals to detect certain diseases. And maybe cancer was one of them. I don't remember exactly how that was, so don't hold me to it. But I, I think they can, think, yeah. Right? Isn't there something weird about that? Like like some animals can s- smell whatever that is. Yeah, and it's weird. I have a, 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 a anecdote. I, I was, uh, was dating a girl maybe a year ago, and one of her dogs got cancer and, and had to be put down. And she put this little sad Instagram video out and it showed her other dog licking the spot. It was right above his snout. He was just licking that spot over and over and over. And she's like, that's the exact spot where the doctor said like his tumor is. And this dog wow. was licking, licking it, like trying to heal him it was so sad wow. and, and like heartwarming at the same time. But so that, that little dog clearly knew, which is crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But think about taking that same sort of sense that animals may have and making that electronic where you could detect coronavirus. Yeah. How crazy would that be? So even if, so we could get rid of the worry of somebody walking onto an airplane who was, you know, didn't have any signs of, of having the virus but was still could infect somebody else. If you could pick that up before they got too deep into the terminal or outside the terminal or definitely before they got into an airplane, so even on the jetway, Walking into the aircraft, you could cut that person off and send, and pull them aside and say, "Well, we're not, you're not going to fly today because you have coronavirus." Man, that would change the world. Uh, even if you could put some of that technology on the street, you know, how many people walking down New York City street have had or or actively have the virus? That would be a fascinating number. So there's some really cool technology in that. Wouldn't that wouldn't that change the way we look at coronavirus today, Dan? I mean, if we knew that. Well, I also feel like that's a little bit, I feel like that's going to, there's going to be a lot of like medical ethics questions with that because, think? well, A, what if it's, I mean, there's going to be some error in it, right? I mean, it can't be a hundred percent true. And so, so one, well, right. all right, you're stepping on a plane with your family and it says, Hey, sir, you can't come on here. Yeah. And because we, we, we detected that you have this and then you can't fly and now your fa- or, and now your family can't fly or whatever. And then you later find out that it, it was a false positive. So it's like, what happens yeah. then? Like. There's a lot well, of it that. needs to be vetted. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it can't it, always be 100%. And then also the idea no, of, no. like, does the flight attendant really get a, do they, should they be privy to your medical? Like, what no, if it's full, scanning your whole body? Like, what if it, what if they can then suddenly it just pulls up all of your medical history? Like, Dan, do they, they're doing that already. Do they get to know that data? You live in Washington, D.C. Of all places, you should know that when you walk down the mall in Washington, D.C., they know who you are. There's enough cameras there to know facial recognition. They know who you are. Yeah, but the se- the Secret Service man doesn't know if I have, you know, diabetes or something. I mean, I don't think no. they're allowed to know. That's what I'm saying. Like, if this is no. pulling, it's it's pulling you and, and scanning you and saying, oh, this guy has this. Like, who gets that data? You know, if someone's going to make a snap decision about where I can enter a building or where I can't. Like, does Starbucks get to know that I have X disease in my medical record and they can exclude me from their, you know, their... That seems, that's where I feel like just like the ethics of it are going to be com- very, cl- very cloudy. You know what I mean? We're getting to, we're going back to Minority Report, aren't we? Is this where that's headed? Minority Report and Tom Cruise? <laughs> I don't know if it's Minority Report, but it's one of these sci-fi movies. I mean, that's a very real thing. And I can't remember where they were talking about that recently. I was, I was listening to that kind of discussion. Um, there, they had a bio, bio medical ethicist on, on television from like MIT or Harvard or somewhere. And well, he was talking I, I, about implications I, I, for something yeah. going forward, yeah. Well, it, it's just like, 
Okay, okay, so let's just go to the example of the United States that happens every day, probably hundreds of times a day. Uh, you get pulled over by the police, like, he's got a canine unit, walks a canine unit around your car, says, hey, my dog indicates that you have, you know, uh, 800 kilos in the back of your, <laughs> in the back of your van. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to take a look, right? Um, right, there's a lot of, we've already kind of been through the initial process of that, like, all right, yeah. how how true are the dogs? How accurate is this thing? How what rights does the the the, the owner of the vehicle have? So it isn't like we haven't thought of it, right? And as a society, we're gonna have to come up with with limits to it, like we do on, every, on a lot of different things. But on a contagious on a cage, contagious disease aspect, uh, I think you're gonna be stuck between a rock and a hard place in that you could be do, doing the person themselves a huge favor by saying hey you're contagious you we need to get you need to have you looked at because you could you could possibly die from this thing and from the greater sense of the community we don't want to spread it to the community and, and cause some of the havoc that's we've recently seen i think there's i, I agree with you there's some uh, ethics that have to be dealt with but also it's sort of beneficial to the person you're pointing it out to yeah 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 i mean that just uh, it just opens up a can of worms potentially. Where, mm. what if it? What, what if you know you have the system and it can detect thirty eight different diseases and they just have to check on the one who's preventing you know in, some employee in airline X from checking a bunch of other boxes and now scanning all the passengers for all these different diseases and then maybe blackmailing some of them because they say hey hey Dan you traveled today and guess what if you pay me ten thousand dollars I won't reveal that you have X condition you know or Sally I know mm. that you have this. What's you know yeah. it's that kind of it's it's a potentially going to expose, but anyway these are just these are just conspiracy theories down the rabbit hole kind of things. But no, this, this I, is an I, interesting, I, I, yeah. The techno the technology won't happen until you deal with those issues, right? This is true. I, yeah, you, you're never going to see that piece of equipment. Americans are paranoid a lot of times, and maybe rightly so because we've been to a lot of situations which we've been right mm-hmm. about. Uh, but if you start putting sensors in airplanes, you are going to get Americans in particular upset about it and not fly because they're watching what's you know they got an eye in the sky yes that's all true so we've always seen to work out those situations and put limits in um this is like with google and facebook and all these other things right we put limitations on them too it's going to be hard but i i think if we if we did have that technology today and say it wouldn't even pick out Say it wouldn't pick out in, in, in particular, like, that guy has, has coronavirus, but you could say, someone's on this aircraft has coronavirus, we all need to get off. And we need to have our temperature checked. Okay, I'm game. I'm, I'm totally game. If I'm walking, yeah. if I'm on a subway in New York City, I think I want to know the same thing. Like, hey, there's 15 people, there's, there's, there is something wrong in this car that I'm on, maybe I ought to exit and figure it out. I, I'm game for that, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. then we, maybe we can also like make it like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know where I was going with that. But there's a, mm. there seems like there's a lot of implications for that kind of stuff. Of course, the big yeah. reference, which when you sent me this article, is the Fifth Element. Like they've <laughs> that scene <laughs> cracks me up when you know the uh, if you haven't seen the Fifth Element, it's a very strange sci-fi movie with Bruce Willis and Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker. who's playing a woman, or he's like no, he's not playing a woman. He's playing a very feminine. No. DJ, he like dresses yeah. up like a woman, but um, it's a very weird, quirky, <laughs> cultish uh, sci-fi movie that I enjoy. But uh, when you sent me that article, I, I I sent you the clip of it. But yeah, the they're on this like spaceship, cruise ship, and um, Chris uh, Chris Tucker's character he goes, no, 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 there can't be a bomb because like the bomb, there's rumor to be a bomb on board. He's like, no, there can't be a bomb because all these all these ships. They all have bomb detectors, and then suddenly right. <laughs> the bomb detector goes off that there's a there's a bomb on board. So that was immediately what I thought 